Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm TJ Donovan, Vermont Attorney General, and we are here to talk about progress that we have made in Vermont's fight against robocalls. Uh, with me today uh, from the Attorney General's office, Charity Clark, uh, our Chief of Staff, Chris Curtis, who is the Chief of our Public Protection Division, Jamie Renner, who is an Assistant Attorney General who has worked uh, on this issue, not only in Vermont, uh, but nationally, uh, Ted Hobson, who is our Consumer Assistance uh, Director, and Lisa Jensen, who is our Consumer Assistance Coordinator. Uh, we're very pleased and thrilled to have uh, two champions uh, in the Vermont Senate uh, who have been introducing legislation and for fighting for Vermonters uh, and for their livelihood on these incessant robocalls, and that is Senator Dick Sears, uh, from Bennington County and Senator Randy Brock from Franklin County. And finally, we have Greg Marshallton, who's the executive director of AARP Vermont. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. So robocalls are a major problem in this country and in Vermont. Each day in Vermont, about 160,000 robocalls hit Vermont. And what's a robocall? A robocall is a computer-generated phone call that delivers a pre-recorded message. Many, if not most of these robocalls are scams. We've all gotten them. Oftentimes they impersonate government agencies or businesses. They threaten Vermonters with legal action or fines, and they intimidate call recipients into paying them money to resolve these made up threats. And why we're getting so many of these calls is unfortunately they're working. And so, here at the Attorney General's office, we've heard Vermonters call for help, their pleas for help to do something about it. And I think we have uh, some progress to announce today. Here's the thing. In the past, when we said, when Vermonters have asked us, what can you do about robocalls? Sometimes we've shrugged our shoulders and said, well, look, not much, they originate overseas. But here's the thing. Foreign scammers, where most of these calls are coming from, they can't call into Vermont directly. They can't call Vermonters directly. What they do is they have to rely on US-based phone companies to accept their scam robocalls onto the US phone network. And then they route these scam robocalls to their US destination numbers. These US phone companies act as gateways for fraud. And that is what we are focusing on today and going forward. These gateway carriers in the United States that act as the middlemen for these overseas, overseas fraud calls that come in. And we're here to hold one such company accountable today. In October of last year, a Florida-based phone company called Strategic IT Partner routed thousands of fraudulent robocalls from overseas into Vermont. These calls impersonated the Social Security Administration. That is the number one scam in Vermont right now, the social security scam. And I know Lisa Jensen will talk about that shortly. They threatened Vermonters with legal action. And despite the, call, the fact that the calls came from overseas, they appeared as being from US phone numbers. These calls were a classic robocall scam. And based on complaints from Vermonters, this is key, we need your help in this. And with support from US Telecom, an association of US phone companies, we were, the Vermont Attorney General's Office, were able to trace this scam robocall campaign from its landing place in Vermont back to an unidentifiable source in India. Quite amazing. We were able to trace this call from Vermonter who called our CAP office at 1-800-649-2424. We then worked with the U.S. Telecom Association and were able to trace that call back to somewhere in India. We determined that strategic IT partners based in Florida had acted as that gateway carrier and they brought the call from India to the US and into Vermont and to a specific Vermonter. So we reached out to the Social Security Administration and with some assistance from them, we determined that strategic IT partners knew or should have known that it was facilitating scam robocalls, a basic legal principle. And based on those allegations, we were able to reach a settlement with strategic IT partners and that settlement blocks the company. This is key. The settlement blocks the company, which is this gateway carrier, from bringing scam calls into the US. Specifically, under the terms of the, of the agreement, st strategic IT partner 
is required to take exhaustive steps to screen the legitimacy of all potential foreign customers. They now have the burden to make sure to vet these calls to make sure they're not scam calls as they come into Vermont. This is a big deal. They have to screen the legitimacy of all potential foreign customers. Strategic IT Partners is barred from bringing all robocalls from foreign customers into the US unless the company has first verified the, legit the legitimacy of the calls. I wanna say that again, this is a big deal. They are barred from bringing all robocalls from foreign customers into the U.S. unless the company has first verified the, legit the legitimacy of the calls. In addition, strategic IT partners have assessed a $67,000 penalty to the state of Vermont. $7,000 is to be paid. Uh, the remaining sixty dollars is going to be suspended for inability to pay and for cooperation, frankly, with our office and the investigation, uh, because I think this framework is the critical piece that I'm going to talk a little bit more about where we can now ho hopefully go after other gateway carriers. And the $60,000 penalty is going to be a deterrent as it will be triggered by future illegal robo act robocall activity in Vermont, and it would be a violation of our uh, a legal document called the assurance of discontinuance. Here's the other part. If the company violates the settlement, it's required to pay Vermont, state of Vermont, $2,000 per robocall that hits us. Remember, we get 160,000 of these things a day. That's a big penalty. So this is the first settlement nationally that requires a US-based telecommunications company to block all robocall traffic unless and until it first verifies robocalls as being legitimate. Now, look, I, I don't want to declare victory, and I'm not spiking the ball. I do think this, this is progress. Strategic IT Partners is just one of many U.S.-based companies that are going to act, that act as gateways for foreign scam calls. So this is not the end of robocalls. I want to be clear with Vermonters about this. But for our office, this settlement is the start of a long-term commitment to addressing illegal robocalls. And I wanna thank Vermonters for continually calling our office and complaining about robocalls and demanding that we do something about it. We heard you, we took action. So in addition to our settlement with a strategic IT partner today, we're also announcing the launch of the Attorney General's robocall team to be led by Assistant Attorney General Ted Hobson. Our robocall team will review complaints that come into our office from illegal robocalls. Vermonters, we need your help. If you're getting these calls, and we're gonna, we have a new scam reporting tool that we'll unveil here shortly, we need to know about it because in order to trace back these calls, we need the original call. In order to reach out to the Social Security Administration and U.S. Telecom Association to do the traceback investigation, Vermonters, we need your help. So we'll review those complaints as they come in, and we'll work to identify which U.S.-based telecommunication company or companies are responsible for bringing these calls from abroad into the U.S. and Vermont. And we'll address our concerns to these companies on behalf of you, the Vermont public. So as I said, this unfortunately isn't the end of scam robocalls. It will, it will take commitment not just by our office, but our federal law enforcement partners, like the Federal Trade Commission, like the Social Security Administration who partnered uh, with us in this case, and we're grateful for their help, and our fellow uh, state attorney generals uh, to hold U.S. gateway carriers to account. But through this settlement, I believe Vermont has modeled a new national approach to choke off scam calls at the pass. I'm incredibly proud of our team. I want to thank Jamie Renner uh, for his leadership on this issue and Chris Curtis and his, with his team. Lisa Jensen and her team at CAP do a tremendous job. We get thousands of calls to CAP every year from Vermonters. And it's mostly about scams. And Lisa will talk about this in a bit. But this is real money that Vermonters are, being, are, are, are getting ripped off from. Vermonters are losing money because of these scams. We heard you and we took action today against one such company to help stop Vermonters from being scammed and to stop the robocalls. I wanna now turn it over uh, to Senator Dick Sears, uh, who has introduced legislation in the Vermont Senate uh, with Senator Randy Brock uh, to add uh, 
uh, more enforcement uh, to uh, stop these robocalls. Senator Sears. Thank you, Attorney General Donovan. I really appreciate your agency's uh, steadfast support for uh, the robocall bill, um, S-11, which um, passed the Senate without much debate. Um, Senator Brock and I, this is our, I think our third robocall bill, and we have not been able to get them through the House. And I think part of the problem is folks don't see it. Um, well, there's not much you can do in Vermont because they are not housed in Vermont. So how important is it? But I think it sends a message, number one, uh, that Vermonters are fed up with robocalls. I mean, I think we're all annoyed by that constant robocall. This is your final opportunity to take care of your um, warranty. And we will not call you again and you say, oh my gosh, I hope they don't, but they do. But hearing that at least two thirds to three quarters of all robocalls are scams, scams that um, take in vulnerable Vermonters, as well as well-meaning Vermonters uh, who are um, just worried about that package that um, was just intercepted at the border. And if you don't contact us immediately, you're going to be arrested. Um, that, I, that's a call I got the other day, actually. Um, and so I, I really think this bill is important, but it's also uh, if all states do pass such bills, or the majority do, I think there's seven or eight others that already have, um, I think it'll be time for the federal government to take real action um, and prevent these robocalls to coming to any citizen of the United States. But at the very least, what you've done and what your agency has been able to do in this one case is stop some of those calls. And we do appreciate it. And we appreciate your support. Thank you, Senator Sears. And we thank you for your leadership and support in protecting Vermonters. Uh, Senator Brock, um, again, I want to thank you for your leadership on this issue. It goes without saying that this is a bipartisan uh, bill. This is an issue that really is not political. This is just about common sense and protecting Vermonters. So Senator Brock, I want to turn it over for you and want to thank you for your continued leadership on this issue. Well, thank you, Attorney General Donovan, for yours. Uh, this is a first step. And, you know, robocalls are, are, are sort of like an electronic mosquito. Uh, we constantly find them buzzing around our head and uh, occasionally they bite and actually take blood. Uh, they are not just an annoyance, but they are a danger. And they're so ubiquitous that uh, just as an example, when uh, the chief of staff uh, of the attorney general's office was testifying on one of these bills in one of our committees, she got a robocall. One of the senators on the committee got a robocall. That's how bad it is. Uh, and so many people uh, in Vermont are concerned about this, that uh, if you ask them about what's the most annoying thing that you find happening to you in today's world, robocalls come high on the list. I'm very encouraged that we're making progress. Uh, this particular action is, I hope, the first of many actions. And it's not the only tool that will be in the box, but I hope to see that toolbox full, filled with a lot of things that deal with this issue going forward. Thank you, Senator Brock, and I agree with you 100 percent. This is one but tool, but we hope to continue to fill that box up with other tools to help protect Vermonters and, and their livelihood. Um, let me now turn it over to Lisa Jensen, who is our uh, CAP coordinator, our Consumer Assistance Program, which is housed at UVM, which is really on the front lines of this issue. Uh, it receives thousands of constituent calls from Vermonters every year. I think it's between 11,000 and 13,000 a year. And here's the thing, at CAP, you talk to a real life person uh, and we try to help you. And the number is 1-800-649-2424. Uh, but we also have a new scam rep reporting tool that hopefully uh, Vermonters will use. So Lisa, let me turn it over to you. Thank you, TJ. Yes, um, as TJ mentioned, we are here to answer the phone to answer your questions. Um, last year, we received over 5,000 calls from Vermonters who were reporting scam robocalls. And um, we are here to verify. Some Vermonters call us and they're not sure if it is a scam call. So take the time 
We want Vermonters to take the time to verify and call our office if they have any questions about a call coming in that may be a scam. We also are very excited to share our new online reporting tool, which allows Vermonters to provide us quick information about the details of the call. And so with that information, we're able to collect this data, which again has led to this very exciting um, first step. And you can find that online scam form at the Attorney General's website, um, ago.vermont.gov. And if anyone has any trouble accessing the form and do want to talk to us to verify the call, then yes, please call our number at 800-649-2424. The form itself is very easy to use. It should only take um, someone about five minutes to fill out. And it's really important that we, as TJ said, that we get your help um, and um, get that information in our online scam reporting form. And as always, um, CAP is here to answer any questions from any Vermonter about a consumer uh, issue, question, or to get some help um, resolving an, an unresolved complaint. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and I just want to reiterate the message to Vermonters. We need this information. If we're able to do these trace back investigations and hold these companies accountable, it starts with a Vermonter calling our office or even better, uh, filling out that online reporting uh, um, complaint that we then can use uh, to conduct the investigation. So Vermont, we need your help. Uh, finally, I want to uh, ask Greg Marshallton, who is the executive director of AARP Vermont to say a few words. Uh, Greg and I have worked closely over the years. Uh, they, AARP does a tremendous amount of work to uh, raise awareness about scams and robocalls and to prevent fraud uh, for their members. Uh, I've had the privilege of uh, being part of those conversations. And, you know, I, I think as Senator Sears said, you hear these stories where Vermonters are, are getting ripped off um, and they're getting scammed on really you know, these calls, they pull on people's heartstrings, they threaten them, they scare them. And Vermonters are losing real money as a result of this. Uh, and one of the things we always say is there's no shame in these stories because it's happening to all of us and we need to raise awareness so people can be armed with this information. So Greg, thank you and ARP for your continued uh, great work in uh, lifting up uh, Vermonters voices and for your work in uh, preventing fraud being perpetuated against Vermonters. Uh, with that, Greg. Uh, thanks, Attorney General Donovan, and a big congratulations to Jamie and Chris. This is a very, I think, a very su significant step. It may seem small, but this is a breakthrough because, as, as General Donovan is saying, um, the, the, the tens and hundreds of thousands of robocalls that come into this state um, are, as Senator Brock happily said, uh, some may just cause a little bit of blood, but some take a huge chunk out of you. I also want to congratulate the bipartisan leadership of Senator Brock and Senator Sears on introducing this robocall bill. We do a lot of work around the state with our members and the public, educating them on frauds and scams. And what's really terrific about today is it shows that it requires a legislative, a law enforcement, and a public education effort to really combat this insidious crime. Uh, General Donovan has been really all around the state with us, in big events, small events. He's done telephone town halls with us. And I think behind us, there is always someone um, who has a really, really painful story and that they're willing to tell. Um, and that sort of gets us back to how valuable the consumer assistance program is and the stuff that Ted and Lisa lead. We strongly encourage our members to report to CAP. This is how we can get on top of these um, these robocall scams as quickly as possible and get the message out to Vermonters across the state. I want to say one thing more is that the Social Security scam, as General Donovan said, is the most prolific scam, not just here in Vermont, but I believe in all 50 states, it is the number one scam. It is a primary phone scam and it is a fear-based phone scam. So if you can imagine 30, 50, 100,000 calls on the Social Security scam coming into Vermont, and let's just say that person ends up getting lucky on, you know, it scams two or three people, right? For very, very little investment up front. They may take eight, 10, 15, $20,000 from two or three individuals. And for that crook, it is a good day's work. So 
trying to put this into scale, particularly with the scam is important because the social security scam is the single most prolific scam in the country. And it is predominantly um, arrives through people's uh, landlines and mobile phones. And this is a really important step to begin protecting, particularly older people who we all know here are more vulnerable to frauds and scams than other parts of uh, other generations in Vermont. And again, I applaud uh, General Donovan and his team, Senators Brock and Sears, uh, and our good friends over at the CAP program who just do incredible work uh, helping protect Vermonters and providing them real-time information. Thanks for inviting me today. Thank you, Greg. Uh, before I open it up for questions, I just want to ask Lauren to show two, two slides, uh, one from our friends from the Michigan Attorney General's Office about an anatomy of a robocall to really understand that this is a global network. Um, and this is why this has been such a tough nut to crack for, for, so, many, for so many of us in law enforcement. Um, so this is, this, is, this is one, but uh, could you go to the next one, Lauren? So you have about five different players involved all over the globe. As we said, most of these scam calls are, are coming from overseas, um, hitting multiple carriers um, with some technology that I think some of my colleagues can explain better than I can um, before it hits the Vermonter. And I think this is why this has been so difficult, as I said, to, to bring an enforcement action. Uh, and why it's so critical for Vermonters to report this to us because getting that scam number allows us to then reach out to our partners, not only in the federal government, uh, but also in the private sector, the US Telecom Association to, to conduct these trace back investigations. And in this particular case, we're able to trace that call back to, uh, to India. Um, and so uh, this is complex, uh, obviously it's big money uh, and it is something that I know that everybody on this uh, conference uh, cares deeply about, about combating, because at the end of the day, what this means is about protecting Vermonters, and that is something that we all feel incredibly powerful about. Um, so with that, uh, I will open it up to questions and think I will turn it over to Charity at this point. Hey everyone. So a couple of you did reach out to us to say that you wanted to ask a question. So I'll start with those folks. If there are other members of the press who are on and would like to ask a question, you can email Lauren um, at lauren.yandel, J-A-N-D-L, at vermont.gov and, um, and let her know if you'd like to ask a question. But we can kick things off with Pat Bradley from WAMC and Lauren will unmute Pat. I might just say, I have to leave for the Senate floor in a few minutes. So don't, thank you, Senator Sears, and thank you, Senator. I don't want to ignore anybody, but I'll have to go shortly. Go ahead, Pat. Hi. Um, good to see you guys, even if it is just virtually. Um, it's been a while. Hope you're doing well. I actually have a, a couple of questions. Um, TJ, you mentioned that you really need Vermonters to become involved in this because you need the original call information and you showed a part of the reporting form. But I think, you know, it might be important to know exactly what needs to be reported uh, so that you can trace stuff back. You know, do they need to know the phone number that came in? Do they need to report what was said? I mean, what needs to be reported to help you with this? Sure, thanks. Let me uh, ask Jamie Renner, who led this, uh, to, to jump in on that. Jamie? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So uh, what we need to understand uh, from the public in order to trace a call uh, is to know the exact date, the time, uh, sorry, the date the call came in, the exact time on that date the call occurred, uh, which people can access on their you know, cell phones, call histories, or, or phone records, uh, your phone number, the number that called you and what was said. Uh, now, if uh, a scammer's left a message on your voice answering machine, you can you know, send us a message as well. But the bottom line of what we need is the date of the call, time of the call, the number that called you and your number. Uh, and the, uh, the new reporting form that we're publicizing today uh, would prompt you to provide us all that information. What are the elements in this that 
could be replicated that would allow you to catch other gateway carriers? I mean, uh, kind of technically, how exactly does this work? Hi, uh, Jamie. Sure. Um, so there's an organization called U.S. Telecom, which is an association of U.S.-based telecommunications companies. And uh, the way that an investigation like this begins is we get a complaint from a consumer that says, I got a scam robocall in this day and time. We provide the relevant information to U.S. Telecom. Uh, U.S. Telecom, which again is is a, an association of, of many US-based telecommunication companies can work out among themselves exactly how that call came into the US, what tower it hopped to, uh, what was the next tower, the next tower to the consumer. So they can uh, report back through US Telecom on the history of a given call and how that call moved from outside the United States into some defined US point of entry and then hopped across towers through a series of other phone providers to the consumer. So once we became aware of the US point of entry, the investigation began. So this, it, it sounds complicated, but kind of in simple terms, why hasn't anybody thought of doing this in the past? I, I think that uh, law enforcement efforts to address robocall scams uh, have been evolving for years and are in a constant state of evolution. Uh, and I think that this is just the right moment in time where U.S. Telecom is providing this capability to law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement, like our office, is now aware of it um, and can now take advantage of it. Uh, and we just, uh, the mold hadn't been broken. I should let some other folks in. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Uh, next, we have Jack Thurston from WECN. Hey, Jack. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, TJ, you spoke of um, this perhaps being a, a roadmap that, that others may follow to, to take enforcement action. Have you, have you, spoken about this with your other, you know, attorneys general counterparts all across the country. I mean, is there interest in in doing elsewhere what you've seemed to have accomplished here? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, and I'll ask Chris and Jamie to jump on this. You know, we're part of a, of a working group with some of our sister states on this issue. You know, look, I think as Senator Brock and um, Senator Sears and Greg Marshall have talked about, this is not a Vermont issue. This is a this is an issue in every state in our country. Uh, but Jamie or Chris, do you want to talk about um, kind of the, the, the NAG working group? Sure. And just as a, uh, you know, as a presidential matter, I mean, this is uh, this announcement today is uh, announcing the, the terms of this resolution. And I suspect there will be great interest across the country in uh, this resolution as a framework or a template that others can look to uh, to impose conditions on carriers. Um, with respect to robocalls. So our, our hope is that this is helpful to our sister states. Um, AG offices are always talking about, you know, issues that confront uh, their citizens and their constituents. And uh, robocalls are universally uh, a problem for consumers all over the country. So I think there'll be great interest. I think that um, the, the other key here is, uh, Jack, and answer your question is, I think uh, this is an important example of state and federal cooperation on an investigation. So our connection to the Social Security Administration, I have no doubt um, will serve as a model that um, it too can be translating to other jurisdictions as it tracks and monitors illegal robocalls relating specifically to the Social Security scam. Jamie, anything you wanna add? No, not at this time, thanks. And my only other question was about, um, by the way, you might want to work on that acronym. I don't know if NAG is the, is the best, <laughs> best name for your group. Um, but Jamie, uh, could you talk technically about what is, what's, keeping, um, what's keeping these gateway providers from just setting up some sort of loop where they can somehow remain 
invisible? You know, can't they route numbers to some other, you know, shell computer somewhere? I mean, have you found out a way to defeat that kind of rerouting? Well, I'm not sure that these players, if they're participating in the US telecom network in terms of passing their calls forward to legitimate phone providers uh, who are then bringing those calls to us can hide because they're invariably in a business relationship with the downstream provider who takes the call from them and passes the call forward to the next provider who passes it to the next provider as intermediaries who passes it then to Verizon or AT&T to send along to the consumer. So uh, I'm not sure they can hide in the context of a traceback. Excellent, cool, thank you, I appreciate it. So those are the only two folks so far who have let us know that they wanna be unmuted to ask a question. Lauren, have any others uh, emailed you to let, let us know that they need to ask a question? I haven't received any emails. Um, folks have the hand raising function. So if you want to quickly ask a question, um, feel free to raise your hand. Otherwise, I think we can wrap it up. I would also say that you're, of course, always welcome to email Lauren or me if you have a question or, or want to talk to us about anything or get any more info, just let us know. Great. Thank you all. <laughs>